Hi guys, Bobby here. Um, we're on a mission. Okay, not exactly. Uh, today is the media drive of the new Subaru XV. It's been out for a while now. I guess a lot are on the roads, but it's the first round that we media get to drive it. So I'll be in the same car with Tom Go from 0 to 100 and Si Wing from Car List. So the three of us are going to drive this car. We're going to head down to Nilai and then to Malacca and then back in one day so, and then uh, we have some off-road driving and some on-road driving uh, these are shorted with I think they are MC5 yep MC5 tires from Continental um, not the greatest but the MC6 is great but the MC5 is eh, it's alright huh? uh, yep that's the new XV it looks 95% similar to the old one, which is over here, the, the orange one. But actually, it's built on the new Subaru SGP, it's a, some global platform that underpins the uh, Impreza, the Leborg, all of them. Same platform. Alright, so I guess you don't need a walk around anymore because this car is so familiar looking. Yeah, that's it. Uh, ours is car number 9 uh, Sorry Still a very small boot Yeah Alright, so we're gonna go for a drive I don't know who's gonna drive first Yep Hi guys, morning uh, I'm in the new Subaru XV And joining with me here is uh, Si Wing from Carlist Hello. Good And morning. of course our big brother at the back Tom from 0 to 100 uh, I'm a big fan of this back in the 90s but he's younger than me <laughs> the car is so quiet that I believe you'll be able to hear what I'm saying yes so the car is very very quiet very very smooth but is this the characteristics of a C segment hatchback crossover suppose or this behaves more like a D-segment exec it really does drive like a D-segment exec that is yep. so we are now on these kind of back roads of uh, again don't know Bangi or Nilai not sure which one soft and supple on those uh, bumps or undulations and all that but when you throw it left or right it handles it except the part whereby you can't tell anything from the steering but the fact is when the steering behaves like this right it doesn't give you the immediate confidence that you can you can do this kind of maneuver you don't feel like that you have to trust the car brakes are good yeah easy to modulate very linear it's just that the CVT noise lah I don't know whether it's the fact that this car can take it so you can push it and push it or push it or you don't feel a thing you continue pushing it until you feel a lot <laughs> so this unit has everything but Watch out for motorcycle. daytime it looks like it has nothing <laughs> you just can't see it. the angle is yeah the reflection really just he said it's quite the setting already you see the passenger side has a pocket the driver side doesn't have a pocket so by doing this maybe they save two ringgit I like the fact that there are two, there's a USB port up front, auxiliary, HDMI and inside here there's another two USB ports and the plastics are rather decent, you know and this carbon fibre trim serves the same purpose were if this is a real or fake carbon fibre trim because I would rather car makers actually do fake ones because real ones doesn't serve a purpose anyway if it's garnished here uh, so, well, it, it looks like it. 
and the doors actually opened up to 90 degrees almost 90 degrees so ingress and egress is uh, very very easy oh there's an armrest I'm sorry now this armrest matches up to the one in the Cayenne because it's one cushion with two lubang Nice. I was missing a uh, yeah, rubber. Oops. All right. Uh, no rear aircon vents, which I don't think is an issue for small five-seater cars. Um, the air can easily flow to the back, so I'm I'm not anal about rear air conditioning vents for five-seater cars. Um, but looking at the shape of this center tunnel, this center console here, right? I can't help but notice if they were to have vents over here, then it would really point at the correct angle instead of others where they are more like ball coolers, you know, they point at your balls. And um, yeah, it's all right at the back here. Hmm. Cheers. Yeah. Actually, in my opinion, the HRV is sharper to drive than this guy here. But of course, it's for it's off roady here. Obviously, it's gonna show that these guys are superior because they are they are they are four wheel drive anyway. First of all, this is just uh, a demo because no one's gonna bring a HRV off road. And these are road tires, right? Immediately, the mud would have filled up the the threads. So obviously, it's gonna be slippery. You know, if, if you put those chunky tires on, on this, I believe it can go up because this is not really steep anyway. Now that will be interesting. That's a four-wheel drive Mitsubishi ASX. Do it, bro! Okay. Hmm. So this is the one with the X mode where it can lock the differentials easily. You look at the right height of the car, it's it almost matches normal SUVs in terms of its right height. So in in many ways this exceeds the right height of uh, normal crossovers. So you actually have an actual underpinning that is similar to the likes of normal SUVs. It's just that the form factor of the body is like a hatchback on top of an of an SUV undercarriage. So that means this this guy here can do proper off-road stuff. Uh, I mean, not to the extent of those um, extreme stuffs that only leather frame cars can do. Um, you get the picture here, right? So if, if these guys were to market their cars as, you know, giving you more weekend activities and all that, you basically can do more with the XV uh, on the outside because you can't do more on the inside compared to this. This is huge, this is spacious, uh, this has a large boot on a day-to-day -day basis, but that guy over there, you see, it actually stopped in the middle and then with the differentials that will lock, you know, it can just roll up easily. Yep. All right. So I, I guess I guess they they did it with that point. Next V.
Okay, now we're just gonna do a short slalom and uh, see how the car drives. I mean, it's not a performance car, so let's just have some fun. The chassis of the car is good, but like I mentioned, I don't really fancy the steering wheel. System kick in and stop the understeer. So the car was supposed to push the front out, but it transfers and it stops it from continue doing so. So it's all right. See, it's supposed to understeer, but it doesn't. of transferring the power to to lessen the, the effect of the car under steering so that's pretty good and here by right it should understeer now now you see that and here by right it should understeer now now you see that and here by right it should understeer Alright, now make no make no mistakes about it. I've said this a few times. Uh, compared the XV to the HRV, I sort of prefer no, 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 the uh, no, 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 no. steering of the HRV. But I also know for a fact that the XV has a more sophisticated undercarriage. You see, immediately just now on the slaloms, this car feels nippier and the handling of the front is tighter now it understeers you see but it's able to control it rather well see the tail starts to step out so that means the car actually loses control over there so i'm gonna do this again see it understeers and then here pushes wide the car pushes wide and understeers you see that's a that's an understeer going on there so the xv was able to mitigate this by rotating the car so that's a big difference but in terms of how the car drives in terms of uh, how the car drives on a day-to-day -day basis the the hrv has a much livelier front end or a more direct steering to be exact which the uh, XV doesn't but just now as we, as we demonstrated the car understeered out and at one point it almost did an oversteer whereby the rear wants to step out even this car got a panel roof that alone makes up for a lot of you know difference now this is the Mitsubishi ASX, it's been out for a very very long time and I believe it's also one of the smallest in this class, rather nimble, not as nimble as the HRV but still pretty much controllable so immediately I can tell the car is it's not as sharp as the HRV, to be honest. See the rear step out. You saw that? The rear is the rear is stepping out. I have to. I have to. I have to counter steer it. This has a four-wheel drive system, and uh, pretty different the way all three cars drive. 
But one thing's obvious, the XV is able to hold this line. See? The traction control comes in and cuts off power. Alright. So there you see, all three cars, they look almost the same, belong in the same segment front wheel drive or rear wheel drive or four wheel drive but the way they the way they do their work when you're doing yours is rather different yeah, right. Right. <laughs> time attack no, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is that an auto mode? auto wiper? yeah, yeah. this one down no oh, one down uh, okay 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 yeah. one down yeah. alright so uh we've done a very very short arguably maybe possibly considered a track day <laughs> but we have enough enough fun so what i get to do over there is to really throw this car into all the little go cut bends and the hrv and the asx so uh, i did mention that on the road when i drive i felt the steering is a bit loose i don't really like it but on the track as you push it, it's, uh, you got, basically you've got no time to even ponder whether that sens sensation is good or not. But one thing is obvious, as I were doing the slalom, the HRV feel sharper. Because this engine is right up front, the entire freaking thing is over the front axle. Okay, that's an that's a inherent trait of Subaru Boxer engines, layout I guess. But as you throw the car into the corner, uh, I'll have videos uh, to show it. And when I throw it in, right, the car wants to understeer, the system um, kicks in. Rudy in the, uh, Rudy, Rudy, the brake base torque vectoring system actually breaks the inner wheels to rotate the car around. It's pretty obvious, you can see on my video later. And then the HRV, which doesn't have this, just after one full lock, the car wants to go straight a bit. But it's predictable. The, the amazing one is the Mitsubishi ASX. First corner, the tail came out. Second corner, understeered. <laughs> so that car is pretty unbalanced. In in, in. I, I, I was afraid like, will the panoramic roof crack <laughs> from from the way it's pushed? So it's pretty obvious. I mean, this is Subaru, nevertheless. Again, as I mentioned, uh, mechanically premium. The undercarriage is basically over engineered for our market uh, it's very very obvious when you drive this and then you hop into the HRV you can feel the HRV is just a box it is very lightweight uh, very but light. yeah very light uh, but it's nippy because of the direct steering and that engine is sweet as well because it's very peppy uh, it, it happily revs rear visibility is rather good because uh, the window line is right at where my shoulder is so I don't feel claustrophobic at all. Uh, there's enough light coming into the cabin. Even this small little window here, I mean, they, they took the effort to, you know, have it there so that you get enough light coming into the cabin. And I was a bit, I was wrong just now with the headrest because uh, it can be placed down and I slouch down a bit, then it's comfortable, it's okay. No issues with that. Uh, generally, it's, it's a comfortable car. It is not very big, not a very big car, but it's comfortable nonetheless. And the angle of the seat back is just about right. It's not too upright, you know. And um, I don't think it's rec it can be reclined. I don't think so. Uh, if it reclines any further, I think the the boot will be literally useless. The boot is very very small. I think it's one of the smallest boots for any car within this price point if I'm not wrong if I'm not wrong 120 130 ish thousand the boot is rather small um, and if you put a large suitcase I think you have to retract the tonneau the tonneau cover okay so yeah I mean it's still like the previous XV a very good compelling C segment crossover and it's very very well spec the specs are really good and it's comfortable it's quiet in terms of performance, it's there. I mean, the, direct, the new direct injection engine uh, is alright. And as, as far as CVTs, again, 
I hate CVTs, but Subaru CVTs are one of the best ones, one of the nicer ones. And uh, yeah, this car is good.